Hello, my horror-loving dudes! I'm Killjoy Jake, and today we're talking a little bit about Scream 7. It's inevitable that this film will be announced, but will it be the final chapter in the Scream series? Let's get into it. Well, sometimes, that is better. Two very quick things before we get into this video. One, please subscribe to Golgotha, my gaming channel. Link is in the description below. And also tonight, we're doing a crazy bracket stream on our favorite final boys. Scream fans better show up, by the way. We got Dewey, Randy, and Chad on this list, so y'all better be there to support your boys. Check that out tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna be a fun one. But getting into this, should Scream 7 be the final chapter? Well, first, there's a few things we gotta talk about here. The last couple of Scream movies done by Radio Silence, that is Scream 2022 and Scream 6, were both a lot of fun, but they both had one thing weighing both of them down, in my opinion. And that is the requel model. I like it, and it's fun, and it's cool, and it's nostalgic, but it's just not as good as a different concept for a remake, sequel, whatever. My biggest issue with the requel model is that it's just a little too busy and typically has a little too many characters, rendering some new characters redundant or useless to the plot. While I think Scream has done this better than most franchises, especially better than Jurassic World and the new Star Wars movies, they still suffer from some of those things at different moments. For instance, in Scream 6, I think Kirby and Gale pretty much serve the same purpose. You could cut one of those characters from the movie movie, and it really wouldn't affect the plot overall. The only thing Gale really does in that movie besides almost getting killed is she shows them the ghost face shrine. They never really give us a reason why Gale found the shrine before Kirby did, even though she was on the Atlanta case, which is of course Jason and Greg, who were the ghost face killers from the opening, from Atlanta, who owned that shrine. How would she not have found that? The only explanation they give to us is that Gale's a better investigator than she is, and that's just a little lazy in my opinion. And listen, I love Gale Weathers. I think she's an incredible character, maybe my favorite Scream character in general. She adds so much to those early movies, and I love her arc through Screams 1 through 5. But Scream 6's biggest issue, in my opinion, is that it's just way too busy with way too many characters. And maybe if you had slimmed off some of that fat, it would have been an even better movie than it already was. And if you're hearing all this and you're like, but Jake, Gail Weathers was awesome in that movie. It was so cool to see that character again. I agree with you. But really, the only reason we had characters like Kirby and Gail was for nostalgia baiting, which like is fun for a little bit, but not so much on rewatch. Like imagine if we're going back all the way to the OG Scream, right? It's perfect. It's a masterpiece. I love that film so much. What if right in the middle of that movie, another character was introduced and then all they did in the entire movie was just be third act backup in the last scene? Some of y'all don't want to admit this, but that's kind of all that Sidney Prescott did in Scream 5. So with Scream 2022 and Scream 6, would they have been better films if they had just focused on new characters, opposed to forcing legacy characters into the plotline? Scream 5 is arguable in my opinion because the legacy characters, especially Dewey, play an integral part to the plot. But in Scream 6, they kind of lose that a little bit. Like you could have just had the cop character, you didn't really need Kirby and Gale in the film, which is sort of a shame in my opinion. And while that is a shame that they didn't play a more integral role in the film, how would you change it to make them have more of a role in that movie? Like, there was already so many characters, how could you possibly do that without making the movie four hours long? Something that I would personally love for the Scream franchise is that instead of doing the requel model moving forward, what if they adopted the Evil Dead 2013 model? Where, sure, it is the same foe, you're facing off against the same enemy, but you have an entire new set of characters and a new situation overall. Alright, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit because there is something else I want to talk about here real quick, and what I think the best route for the Scream franchise is at the moment. Scream 7 at this point is inevitable. It's going to happen, that last movie made a bunch of money, even more money than Scream 2022. So, Scream 7 is going to happen eventually with or without radio silence, but that's a different conversation. In my opinion, the best route the Scream franchise can take right now now is to end the requel arc with Scream 7. Have one more movie that has the requel formula with all the legacy characters, all the new characters, the core four, all these characters coming together for one last big grand finale. And yes, Scream 7 would serve as a final chapter, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the series. Let's have Scream 7 come out in like 2025. Radio Silence directs it, we have the core four there, we have all these characters that we've accumulated from Scream 6 and all the past movies coming together for one big finale against one gigantic ghost face killer. We have done the legacy thing to death in my opinion. The last movie was all about that pretty much. In fact, the third act setting was literally just nostalgia painted over a big theater. 
And listen, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really creative way to do that. That's awesome. But now this franchise has done that. We've been there, done that. Let's move on to something else. Now, the only reason I say that Scream 7 should wrap everything up, even though we did kind of get a conclusive ending in Scream 6, is because we didn't really get a conclusive ending for all of our characters. As of right now in the Scream storyline, Sydney is hiding out with her family somewhere, probably. Not still, I'd imagine. But after she gets word that the Ghostface killings are done, she probably goes home. Sure, but I want to see that in a movie. Same thing with Gail Weathers. She was on the brink of death. Girl nearly died. And we don't know what's going on. Like, to our knowledge, she's still laying in a hospital bed somewhere. And Sam Carpenter, too. Like, we have all this buildup with her possibly going ghost face. We need to go somewhere with that or don't. So let's get one more movie that just wraps all of these storylines up all nice and neat in a bow. Happy, sad, whatever. I also really want to see one more movie with Nev Campbell after she got snubbed with Scream 6. It would just be really cool to see her back for one more movie where she gets paid what the woman deserves. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> let's get one more grand finale like that. But then moving forward with the franchise, let's adopt that Evil Dead 2013 model where it's about a whole new set of characters in a whole new town in a whole new situation, but they're going up against a ghost face killer. One of their friends is going ghost face for a whole new set of reasons that we've never seen before in the past. Why I love the Evil Dead 2013 model so much is because it's so fresh and you did not know what to expect from that film. Now, don't get me wrong, I love what the first three Evil Dead movies did. Telling one big story with crazy tonal shifts, it gets way goofier with every entry. Love it. It's a campy little masterpiece of a story. It's very fun. But it is all over the place. In every single one of those first three movies, they retcon something from the past movie, which I just think is very funny and ridiculous. But then as we move into Evil Dead 2013, they simplify the story, realizing that's one of the weakest elements of that franchise. So instead of trying to make another Evil Dead movie where we can get Ash Williams in there somehow, they just said, hey, fuck it. We have five characters who are at a cabin in the woods and they have to deal with the Necronomicon. Instead of a bunch of dumb college kids going up to a cabin in the woods to probably have a bunch of crazy drunk sex, our characters in Evil Dead 2013 are trying to get one of the characters clean off of drugs. A totally different situation with brand new, well-written characters facing off against demons in the Necronomicon. So what if we did that with the Scream franchise? Scream 8 is set in New Orleans, let's say, with a brand new group of people people who love horror movies, perhaps? Stab 10 is coming out at this point? Maybe? And somehow they figure out that someone in their friend group has put on a ghost face mask and killed somebody in the opening scene, presumably one of their friends. Now see, that's the biggest thing about this model, is that's not where the concept ends. Because if you just did that, like let's say a new girl, her name is Sandy... Uh, uh, Purse Rot. God, that's a terrible name. But let's say Sandy Purse Rot, this... This unfortunate woman with this unfortunate name living in New Orleans is dealing with a ghost face killer. You can't just make it the same thing as Scream, but in the modern day. You have to add another flavor to it, just like how Evil Dead 2013 does. Throughout Evil Dead 2013, we learn that the rules of the Necronomicon are completely different than what we knew in the past. Same thing goes for Evil Dead Rise, which is why I really love both of those films a whole lot. So what could we change about the danger in Scream 8, theoretically? Well, it would have to be something to do with the killer himself. You can make the motive something different, like opposed to a past relative dying and they're trying to get revenge for that. They could do like anything else. You can have the killer have a completely different look like how Scream 6 did. Just don't do the same cracked ghost face thing. Maybe there's a cult of ghost faces. Maybe Stu is there. I don't like that last one, but it's a possibility unfortunately. Point being, there are still many, many ideas out there of movies that we can do in the Scream universe that have yet to even be touched, really. So will Scream 7 be the final chapter? Yes and no. I think it should close out this chapter of the Scream franchise, but I don't want the series to be over there. I think there are still many more fresh ideas we can muster from the Scream franchise that would make for something really fun. The concept of one of your friends dressing up as a slasher villain and trying to figure out who it is every single movie is really fun, but when you have repeat characters, it starts to kill the mystery a little more with every single movie. We're already starting to see that in Scream 6. Overall, the biggest thing to take away from this video is the best route that this franchise can take moving forward is to keep it fresh with every single movie, and that even goes down to the bottom line of the characters themselves. Let's wrap up all the past storylines in Scream 7, but then give us a clean break moving into Scream 8 and future movies onward. But me personally, I think the Scream franchise can go on forever. But what do you think? Do you think Scream 7 should be the final end-all be-all of this franchise, or are there more Ghostface stories to tell in the future. 
Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching this new Scream 7 Theory video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to see this channel grow. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.